Today we'll first try to understand what is moksha according to your lens and what it means actually. Okay, Shalaja. Not getting reborn again. Do you know there's a next birth? Are you sure? Maybe. I don't know. But that's why we are here. You are telling something which you have heard. Yeah. You are not telling something what it means to you. I want to hear what it means to you. Liberation. Practically, tell me what it means to you. I don't know. I never thought about it actually. The freedom from the cycle of life and death. But moksh to me, uh, be at peace with myself and with everything around me. To have self-knowledge about myself. Peace means what? You. No distraction, nothing bothers me. I'm, I'm able to be uh, someone who can observe and, and plan action accordingly, some, something like that. Not be affected uh, by everything around me. What if uh, your house is on fire? Will you not be affected by it? I mean, I'll take action to protect myself, but not be there and be so much tense that I'd say not do anything about it. I mean, I'll take action to protect myself, uh, people in my household. But sometimes I think things around me, for example, I, I get tense or I'm like so emotional about what people have said. I mean, I want to be in a state where, you know, those things don't affect me and I'm... You must watch a video on our YouTube channel, Are You Emotional? Okay? You can go to the channel and search it. Whoever thinks they're emotional, they should watch that video. For me, staying happy, making at least few people happy, do dharma in a way which doesn't affect my happiness and peace on day to day and also not expecting anything back in return. If I can do that, I feel that's moksha for me. One thing is clear, you cannot make anybody happy. Being an observer, that's what moksha is for me. Not attached into the day-to-day things and then seeing myself from as an outsider, observe what I'm doing. So my understanding before I met you was 84 forms of life so human world circle you know human anybody will take so but now it's uh okay we have to get free ourselves from five regards come love mo you're giving a nice textbook answer <laughs> No, no, no. I'm work. It's it's written every in Sikhar Das. There's a uh, these five things that we say every day, and then uh, you taught me the practical thing of that, and also trying to be detached with the impermanent and attach myself to permanent and it's a learning process. Good answer. Moksha for me is okay I would still want to call emotional it's not depending on anything that happens around me where I feel I have control of what I want to feel being sad or happy or whatever right so that should be like what is triggered from me but not by outside of anything even say for example you ask like what if uh, your house is on fire few things i can control so i'm aware i can control one thing is how i feel how i take few things i do not control so in that case like i accept that okay few things is not in my hand but where i have the control of my own self and feel liberated so that's that could be like moksha for me do all good karmas and then <laughs> carry that moksha for me probably would be finding happiness in everything whatever you do and not being dependent on you know certain things uh, that are outside of your control if you gain that confidence that you know you can live away with so many things and concentrate on your inner self better yourself in life do whatever makes you happy I feel that is moksh when I get the detachment on my mind stop jumping like a monkey going here and there I have control on my mind like if I sit in the meditation I can control myself like he is fully and not very emotionally. Good answer. It's whatever your understanding is. Nothing is right or wrong. Okay. Pradeep ji. For me, Moksha is successfully fulfilling my all duties towards me or society or anybody else and enjoy the journey. Okay. Good. Good answer. Before I start, Archana, I saw your post and uh, I was astonished. Astonished when I saw, you know, you remember Nandita Das and uh, Shabana Azmi, they went bald. Uh, because of the movie. So I thought like how much dedication they have that and the detachment that they took their hair off for their movie, but that was their career. But when I saw your, like a big round of applause for you, like the way you have uh, detached yourself, like it's amazing. So um, a literal meaning for moksha is uh, your releasing from birth and death. And for me, moksha means uh, my day-to-day life. When I hear criticism from anybody, I should be able to say, thank you. You criticize me and I will work on it. Instead of thinking and getting annoyed. The goal is very, very short, like in relationship. Whenever there something happens like um, day and night, your mind is 
constantly working towards it. Why? Why did this happen? Although I have been working on it, the intensity is much lesser, uh, but still uh, there is a lot more work uh, to be done towards it. So this is my goal, like just getting uh, detached from small things in relationship. Good answer. I thought it is like a salvation. Salvation is a, a Christian term, uh, which mm-hmm. means everybody who is born a sinner, and then you reach uh, heaven and you get salvation from mm-hmm. God. That's a different concept, totally different concept. We need to be good, be happy. Our children also will do the same thing. And karma will follow. Try to see positive things in everything that's happening that can make everybody happy. For me, moksha is um, a state of detachment. Attached to detach, being an observer. And uh, I feel like from my ego, from my attachments. On emotions you're talking, moksha from that, freedom from that. No, not not emotions, right? Like a state of mind. That, 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 what is mind made of? Mind made of thoughts. Yeah. What are thoughts? It's emotions only, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either probably. it's sankalp, vikalp or it's emotions. Sankalp, vikalp means? thinking to do this or not to do that or eat this or not to that simple thoughts and then we have emotions attached to it so i think for my emotions like i, I want some to be in a state of mind where i can be uh, i can be detached and before you ask this question i didn't really think about much you know i mean you would always pass, say it in passing oh i'm gonna go and you know in hindi we say moksh ki raah pe ja rahi so it would always be a joke but, you know i never really thought about it as like that moksh is like you know having a saint like life you know you're all like the himalayas and being a saint and you know just freedom of everything so that was the whole intention but i i think now understand that moksha is something now what i feel it should be for me detachment to feelings and detachment from material things oh this person has that and how did he or she get that so easily what do you mean how by detachment I... to material things material things as in uh, like you don't want to possess them no i guess i want to possess them but i guess i don't want to feel bad that why can't i possess it now and why is this other person so easily possessing it when i should That's have jealous have... jealousy maybe jealous but also the the hunger for maybe uh, material things like you know I want that house and how should I get that house it's okay if I don't have that house I don't have that house I want that diamond ring if I don't have the diamond ring it's okay you know or if I lost that diamond ring it's okay like letting go and detachment to material things I would also want more from my emotions I get easily affected by them by you know by others words so more should be to find the deeper meaning to life purpose to life what's my ultimate purpose in life more like a freedom for everything and for me it's most moks is like sacrifice you you do something without any expectation for someone mm-hmm. and you just get get freedom from that whatever you you don't expect anything i think that's for me it's moksha what if you have paid somebody to get a job done and that person doesn't get a job done what about that expectation oh <laughs> how mad will you get itne paise diye phir bhi kaam nahi hua kaam nahi hua but at least uh, you like fighting for your money Oh yeah, of course I do. I, I of course I do. But for this is more more like emotional kind of uh, purpose things. What I'm talking about, not like a material thing. It's more like uh, someone's feelings. You do something for someone, but not just to for to expect anything from them, right? Uh, so you you do something good thing for them without any expectation. Okay, I do something for them, but I don't want anything rewards. If I do something for someone, that okay. doesn't mean. that okay this person has to do something for me no do sacrifice but in a, in a good way in a emotional way if i learn to live in a blissful way not the materialistic aspect but uh, maybe to some extent emotional also if i for which uh, we have to let go things so if i learn to do that way i feel i attained moksha <laughs> that's what i feel i connect it with the present day uh, living only moksha is nothing but uh, the state of mind that we have if we are uh, contented and uh, so if the emotional feelings are controlled and kept under uh, i connect it to the present day i don't think much about the next uh, janma and all. good answer to me i mean again i don't know what the moksha is reaching end of the life end up living i mean peacefully and then uh, i mean detached from our living from all the material 
stuff including your body like and i don't believe in like the next next birth or the, or the previous birth and everything it's just what you do in this current life and then what kind of name or things that the kind of you leave behind how you are going to be remembered is what going to matter than what what you are going to become in next birth and things like that good answer see everybody has their own moksha thoda time pehle aisa hota tha jaise pata hai jaram and mrityu same moksha hota hai bahut der pehle nahi just last one week se mere ko aisa feel hua वो जस्ट आपका क्वेश्चन आ गया लेकिन मैं ये फील कर रही थी कि जो क्लोज रिश्ते हैं ना उन उनके साथ आदर सत्कार प्यार सबके साथ रहे लेकिन फिर भी उनसे डिटैच हो तो मेरे को ऐसा फील होता है कि वही मोक्ष है और और भी हम जो परमात्मा है उनसे जुड़े और ये डीप फील हुआ इसलिए मैंने ऐसा बोला वेरी गुड आंसर जस्ट रिकेपेट वंस इमोशनल फ्रीडम फ्रॉम रिलेशनशिप दैट मीन्स लिटिल डिटैचमेंट फ्रॉम रिलेशनशिप स्टिल गिविंग देम लॉट ऑफ लव एंड अफेक्शन हाँ परमात्मा से कनेक्शन ओके गुड फॉर मी मोक्ष इज अल्टीमेट there is a one ultimate thing like when my body prana is uh, released from this so I had to reach to a level where it is satisfying for me or it is satisfying for my परमात्मा that what he he is expects from me to do so during my journey of life i will be doing the checklist checking some points while uh, going through any activity so if that checklist is met i have fulfilled the requirements of the society so that is moksha somebody else also said that uh, i think sentil said the same thing good answer apne hisab se hame jo acha lage acche se kare kisi aur ke dar se nahi wo kya bolega wo kya sochega acche se apne karm kare aur baad mein bhagwan ke paas jaye bhagwan ke paas jaye last mein to bhagwan ke paas jana bada pasand hai moksha ke liye everybody wants to shuru shuru se hum log sune है ना कि लास्ट में अच्छे कर्म करो फिर भगवान के अगर पास मैं आपको अभी बोलू अभी भगवान के पास आपको मैं लेके चलती हूँ आप चलेंगे वो वांट्स टू गो टू गॉड राइट नाउ <laughs> नहीं अभी अब अभी, अभी बोले तो आपके पास आऊंगी नहीं अभी मेरा ग्रैंडसन बड़ा होगा उसको देखभाल करना है I'm taking right now. You are in a board of Bhagwan only. What do you think this is? आपके पास आएंगे हम लोग पहले बिल्कुल सबके लिए मोक्ष धाम का रिटायरमेंट होम बनाऊंगी मैं मोक्ष धाम तो वही है ओके राधा मोक्ष अकॉर्डिंग टू मी इज इमोशनल डिटैचमेंट इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट बट सी ऑन अ डे टू डे लाइफ इट्स नॉट एज इजी एज सेड दैट वी शुड नॉट गेट अफेक्टेड बाय एनीथिंग इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट वर्किंग ऑन दैट एंड बीइंग पीसफुल विद योरसेल्फ इज व्हाट आई फील इज मोक्ष वेरी गुड सो एवरीबॉडी हैज गिवन देयर आंसर्स थैंक यू सो मच मोक्ष मेनी पीपल हैव सेड दैट थ्रू द कर्म दे वांट टू दे दैट्स मोक्ष फॉर देम finding a purpose of life sacrifice or tyag you know some people said don't expect anything detachment from own feelings from material things detachment from relatives all of you said a bits of moksha and which is true i'm going to tell you the what scriptures have told about moksha moksha is where your ahankar identity of the self completely extinguishes into the totality that's moksha that means you're no longer working for your identity ahankar and there are three types of ahankar i'll discuss which are the obstacles to achieve moksha so usko isme nirvan bhi bolte hain nirvan means to extinguish suppose there's a candle lit somewhere otherwise it's dark so when you even blow out the candle this complete darkness there's no duality so that's a state of moksha stability is therata in the mind where you're not emotionally dependent on anybody but that doesn't mean you're not functioning in life you could be more functioning more involved whether it's education politics or whatever but you're not functioning through your ahankar for yourself for your little self you're working for the totality it's almost like you become the arrow shot by bhagwan you don't have your own will you're just functioning because that's your path the arrow doesn't have any will of its own does it who decides the direction and the force of the arrow the totality the parmatma you call the ishwar and ishwar is not a person sitting up in the heaven okay so that's what is moksha and there are two types of stages one is called jeevan mukta person that means you have achieved that within this lifetime while you have this body okay and then second is videh mukta that means you are free from the body so there are two stages while living in this life also you can achieve moksha and then 
once after you leave the body also body has gone don't come back according to scriptures for the reincarnation birth after that's the total meaning like once you leave the body your sukshma sharir get dissolved in the totality so that's a higher meaning of moksha but day to day basis there are three obstacles first is as i send my post they have bhavna body consciousness very big obstacle we are constantly enamored by our own body we want to keep it beautiful fit how i look and what the role i'm playing i should be playing to the best of my ability so this is all body consciousness even the role that you're playing you're attached to your husband wife children relatives uh, neighbors the country you're born in everything is a ahankar that is called deh bhavna or deh ahankar that means you're identifying with that body being a male or female also if you're restricting yourself oh i'm a male i cannot do this or i'm a female i cannot do this oh i'm a indian i cannot do this or whatever you're thinking which is the identity of the body is called deh abhiman deh ahankar or deh bhavna okay that is the first obstacle to moksha yoga teaches us to remove all the obstacles one by one so first obstacle is deh bhavna any questions in that it's pretty straight forward easy isn't it the second is lok bhavna like you said emotionally disturbed when somebody criticizes us lok kya kahenge what are they saying so a lot of fear comes with uh, especially if you're belonging to a group you may be coming from a particular group which speaks a particular language or a particular state or a country doesn't matter if you feel identified to that community you have this lok bhavna very strong ahankar of belonging to that community or a caste or a race or a religious background doesn't matter that's also a an obstacle for the moksha a lot of times there are a lot of fights between people that hamare yahan aisa hota hai we do like that you know even suppose two different cultures get married that fights between the two families very common right sometimes or identification that this is done in our culture that is done in your culture it's your and mine that is ahankar also lok bhavna so you have to actually catch yourself what i'm saying is also a sadhana for you wherever you're feeling that okay i'm getting attached to this type of attachment this ahankar is building up on me just stop there right away what am i attaching myself to and the third one is shastra bhavna or attachment with your own teachings or scriptures so some people you have seen they study a lot read a lot and they get attached to oh this is written in this and this is how i have to do or this is the best uh, and whatever the other person is saying you don't this is interpretation is best according to my guru you know people fight between having their gurus also or what they have understood about that so going beyond this is removing your obstacle one by one and these three are very very deep topics in details but i'm just giving a very high overview that even if you are attached to any of your shastras you have to get rid of that also eventually because shastras are very important it's almost like a mirror for your self discovery you cannot achieve moksha without karma yoga without studying shastra all these things are very very needed but eventually you have to even go beyond that it's almost like you use the soap to wash your hand to remove the dirt but you don't leave the soap also you wash the soap also to get fully clean so you have to remove that teachings also from your life like once it's assimilated you throw that book also you don't get attached to that book also or the teachings you have to go even beyond that and it takes a long 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 time even you don't have to get attached to your practices like some people if they not able to do some practices they feel guilty about it you don't have to get feel guilty about anything that's fine whatever you can do you can do so not getting even attached to your own sadhana or practices and feeling guilty about it or having a kind of um, agitation in the mind oh my god i'm not able to do this today whatever your routine is suppose something happens your child gets sick and you're not able to do something or you are too busy in your office you're not able to suppose go to temple because you have too much of work feeling bad about it drop that also any questions in these three wouldn't that make people lazy slack off sometimes having some rules are good at least to begin with right rules are fine but i'm saying this is for a more mature practitioner who understand what the goal is goal is ultimately moksha sadhan is not the goal your practices are not the goal okay Once we attain that so that's like until then we should not right like it's you should always come back to your practice yes that's what i'm saying moksha i'm talking about more state of moksha when you that is very high state when you even leave the practice and scriptures you don't need all those things suppose you've climbed on top of the mountain you don't need the rope anymore so it's almost like um that and also in olympics you've seen pole jumping you hold on to the pole and then you leave the pole and jump on the other side if you keep holding on to the pole you'll fall on the same side so that's why a lot of people fall and that's why a lot of you see a lot of scams happen with even people of high spiritual things because they fall on the same same side keep they keep holding to their some identity that should not happen you should not be holding to any identity i know it's a very high state sorry to introduce that here <laughs> 
but the topic i'm discussing is like that i have to give you the entire picture it may not be see the thing is when you hear anything it may not be clear to you right away but have that in the back of the mind and once your mind matures you will understand eventually at least on the intellectual level you'll start understanding that even though you haven't reached that state and i'm just saying what's written in the scriptures it's not even my what i'm saying what i have understood what is written i'm just reiterating that a lot of times you've seen this uh, big uh, organizations advertise their priya as their best right you do this and you'll get the relief and do that and my, they, i have seen when i was doing all this um, market research <laughs> what they do i have done all the courses from all the organizations just to see what they do and everybody by default they praise their own thing except few very genuine ones they say that you can follow any methodology so anybody who's praising their method they're just advertising and they want followers so always remember that you should have this intellect to even counter people who are up there on the pole to ask questions and with your understanding ask questions and see and that can only happen when you start reading upanishads and bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is a kind of a sar a summary of upanishads and um, upanishads give the core teachings they're like mirror to know yourself i'm telling you like the eyes cannot see itself the self cannot be revealed similarly unless you do invest time in these studies it's almost like a must if you want moksha if that's your goal at least once a week or once a month invest some time in understanding this shastras okay very very important and once you start getting a hang of it it's mind blowing and how it happens you may find it very boring so how that even intent to study the shastra happen there's a term called ishwar anugraha bhagwan ki kripa god's grace there's no somebody up again i tell you there's not somebody up sitting and distributing grace tum le lo tum le lo <laughs> tum bhi le lo <laughs> it's earned earned through your practices and your prarthana ishwar anugraha is earned that grace of god is earned and you will see the change in your life gradually if you keep doing your practices keep following whatever is taught here in moksha dham be sincere student you'll see the change big time in your life because all mind works the same way there's a very funny story i recently heard about ishwar anugraha what happens is there's a blind man he wanted to see the king i mean he cannot see the king but he wanted to meet the king <laughs> he's a blind man <laughs> so he went to the guard and um, the castle and then um, the guard said okay keep walking keep touching the wall and keep walking and you'll find another door just enter that door and then when you enter the door you'll find another guard he'll take you to the king okay so first thing cleared and he starts walking starts walking walking he keep walking walking it was a, and he was touching in the wall and walking he's thinking oh my god the fort is really long and big he comes back to the same first guard <laughs> that guard first guard said what happened you didn't find the second door no i didn't find it okay i'll come with you what happened right at the time the door was coming he got itchy so he stopped touching the wall and then he kept walking <laughs> so he missed the door now what was that lack of ishwar anugraha the itch could have come before or after but it came at the same time he was not ready so there's another term called adhikari adhikari for moksha and it's called the term is mumukshutvam and many of you must have heard this term from where which book yes yes tell me the name of tatvabodhash tatvabodha yes mumukshutvam Yeah. and then adhikari has four qualifications given in that that's why i introduced you to that book so you have to be adhikari then only to come to that path of moksha otherwise it's impossible most of the people are bhukshu bhukshu means in bhog they want to enjoy life and there's nothing wrong with enjoying life but at one point you feel like oh my god i'm just going in cycles what's happening festival comes every year do the same thing every year again and again meeting the same relatives again and they're talking the same problems again and again you get bored of it that is also ishwar anugraha if that thought comes to you so if you are getting such thought consider yourself lucky that you're getting such thought that means from bhubukshu you are becoming a mumukshu a person who wants to go towards moksha any questions so do we have to be conscious on every activity we do every day or like i know it is a long process i i may not be able to how do we i don't want you to live in stress okay <laughs> being conscious what i'm doing what i'm eating how i'm breathing no no it's not like that so everybody has put curd right set curd like when you boil the milk and then you check the temperature and put the little jaman or that whatever the curd is and then you put it in a particular way yeah and then you wait for the morning to curd to set so if i ask you in this step what is the most important is it the boiling of the milk is it the checking the temperature is it putting that small sample of curd or is it the way it is put in the night or is it what is important every, every step is important every step is important exactly so mumukshutvam for a mumukshu 
it's like multi prong approach do your practices every day reading books whatever i'm guiding you to read read those books karma yoga which i'll eventually discuss how karma yoga transcends into bhakti because bhakti is called the mother of gyan okay without bhakti the gyan cannot enter bhakti simply means the love love for what you're doing so if you're loving yourself right now sitting on the mat that is also bhakti but you really love it you can't live without it if, if you can if you don't do it one day you miss it that's love right so if you have that love you're on the right path so start there and as mm. i introduce you to different things keep practicing that and keep incorporating more and more and more it's like how much you can take and then when we discuss karma yoga because most of you just say that you have to do your right action you have to <clears throat> help people or things like that we'll discuss the aspects of karma yoga in the next series also and then things will be more clear okay there are three methodologies it's very scientific and it answers all your questions it's not a fad or that oh like for example in west there are a lot of fads come up for spirituality like um, before it was like positive thinking somebody said positive thinking right positive thinking positive thinking is okay to an extent but it will it only has a temporary solution when you actually have a problem you can positively think but actually it doesn't solve your problem for long term because the problem keeps coming back and you get stress even though you're positively thinking inside the stomach is churning and then the, there was another one few years back um affirmations positive affirmations i am this i am that i'm already rich that also doesn't work the third these days is from affirmation they have gone to manifestation <laughs> i can manifest if i just think about it doesn't work that way you have to deal with your problems on a day to day basis you have to deal with your relationships on a day to day basis you have to deal with your emotions on a day to day basis so that is why because the problem is so huge because the obstacles are so huge that's why the solution is also very huge and it requires a lot of investment of time energy effort and the love the zeal to do it that fire that fire within you has to be on all the time and again that is ishwar anugraha okay you have to earn that grace you have to earn that fire it doesn't develop sometimes within your family will say i can think about these things why can't the other person think they don't have that fire and it's not their mistake it's just the churning of the karma they have to go through and then only they'll come to a point where they'll realize that remaining in the cycle is not giving me happiness i want to get free from this cycle the three methodologies are shruti yukti anubhuti shruti means our scriptures okay shastra which you listen shruti means something that is heard so before it was an oral tradition everything was heard from the guru so that's why it's called shruti and for shruti and shravan you listen to it and then you get that knowledge first hand okay by listening to your teacher uh, shruti yukti yukti means asking questions which is mananam that means you analyze each and everything you just take it don't take it just right away okay just because my teacher has said i have to just suck it up we are not blind faith we are not a culture of blind faith we are allowed to ask questions otherwise then many religion if you ask question you get beaten up or shot right in our culture even our teachers gurus introduce something called uh, they ask question to themselves they self rebuttal i forgot the sanskrit term for it what if what if and the whole sometimes book is written on self rebuttal that means asking question to your own self and asking question to the teacher analyzing things whatever you have heard how this how that why why ask questions asking question no doubt should be left trailing behind because then there will be no growth because that doubt will be there the third one is anubhuti anubhuti the methodology is nididhyasan that means nididhyasan is a special form of meditation where you contemplate deeply on one teaching just one teaching for example aham brahmasmi okay like i am brahma just that one statement from upanishad and you just keep revisit just go in a very contemplative state or take one shloka or bhagavad gita just go into deep contemplation about that the bhav of that that is every day every day for one week you just focus on just one shloka and let it assimilate within you that is called process called nididhyasan and then you get the anubhuti then you start getting experience deeper experiences so there are three methodologies given shravan manan nididhyasan and then as they say rest is a history you'll get pulled first you have to put little effort and that magnet is so strong that it will pull you on then things happen effortlessly in your life then whatever you think will start manifesting then at that point later and you won't feel like you're doing anything that karta bhav has gone those who want to experience are only the kartas if you don't want to experience anything you're not even karta but anyway i'm giving too many terms i'm sorry <laughs> let's stop here <laughs> any questions so upar se chala gaya no no questions no this is all uh, this is all great i mean uh, archana i don't even know how to say i'm overwhelmed i think everything you share with us you make it very simple and easy to understand uh, 
take us on this journey. So definitely making a huge uh, difference. Yeah. So if you haven't started with the book Tattva Bodh, it's a very good book. It's actually a book of definitions. Very simple book. That's the first thing everybody should read to understand the real meaning. <clears throat> so before starting reading Bhagavad Gita, also you should know the terms actually what it means. Okay, because all the English terms are very confusing. You should know the real Sanskrit terms. If you can learn Sanskrit well and good, if not, just buy that book. Understand it's it has a good translation in English, but actually you should know the original Sanskrit terms. What is Vairagya? What is what is Vivek? In the last chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Bhagwan says, um, chapter eighteen, verse sixty-six: uh, "Sarv dharmani parityajya mami kam sharanam raja aham tvam sarv pape bhyam moksha syasi maashucha." That means. Hey Arjun, just surrender all your actions to me. I will take you towards moksha. Very profound statement. You can meditate on it for next one week and think what it means to you. Chapter eighteen, verse sixty-six. You know, I'm a very curious person. I was very impatient person, <laughs> so I wanted to read Bhagavad Gita right away. <laughs> The whole thing in a go. Like it took me few months, but without understanding, I mean, just to get a gist of it, what I'm entering into. I wanted to go through it. So when I reached this verse. I loved it so much. Even then, I didn't remember anything for the first chapters. <laughs> I started memorizing this verse. I loved it so much. I don't know why it just hit me so much that everything you have to surrender to God. Like what you're doing, any role you're playing, just surrender, surrender. I'm doing it for you. I'm not doing it for my children or my job boss. That's a <clears throat> one of the aspects of karma yoga. We'll discuss it next time. But that's such a beautiful verse. I love it. That's one of my favorites. Thank you very much, Ajna. I think. We need time to process all the information to be sure. I think we are at the even not reached to the first stage yet. Shravanam, you are at Shravanam. <laughs> You're listening to me. <laughs> listening attentively and processing at the same time. That's what I exactly is is still going, and we need time to process everything. So. Yeah, that's fine. At least you are at the Shravanam stage, right? Yeah, Shruti, no. you're you're into Shruti, so you're reading the Shastra. You started reading Tattva Bodh, I know. And uh, yeah, Devya, you have a question. Yeah, um, I was just wondering, what if we lose faith in God? You know, I used to believe. You know, at uh, in my childhood, uh, my mom and dad used to like force me into go to temples. Force me, you know. They they're very conservative and very religious people. So first of all, faith is the word very misleading. Okay, because faith can be blind also. You don't know anything, but just because somebody has told you, you have to follow that. Correct. Look at your right hand. Do you believe that uh, you're looking at your right hand? Look at your right hand. You believe yes or no? Yeah. Yes, you believe you're looking at your right hand. Now I'll just twist my question a bit. Do you believe you're looking at your right hand or you know that you're looking at your right hand? I know. Exactly. So that is the difference between faith and knowledge. People may tell you to believe something. It's totally up to you whether you want to be. I don't want to believe anything. You can tell that also. I want to okay. find my own truth. I don't want to if you're telling me to put my right hand to put that chanamrit, why should I use right hand? What if somebody doesn't have a right hand? Is it like upshakun like bad thing, bad omen to put with the left hand? Ask these questions. Yeah. I I uh, recently we had a some savitri vrat kind of a ritual or something at uh, we do it regularly every year so i was i was asking my mom why do we even do this uh, why do you even do uh, tie a thread around uh, you know uh, our neck every year you know what is the importance of this thread i don't even understand my mom was like you know she she said we do it because uh, savitri did it <laughs> you know long 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 ago so probably we are asking this questions because we haven't asked this questions in our teenagers okay mm-hmm. now kids are asking this questions and very valid questions definitely so you have to understand two things if rituals are bothering you then probably you are in the fast track for mamukshutvam okay <laughs> rituals are the first part of the vedas karm kand people who cannot go to directly upanishads they are put into karm kand you do these rituals at least your mind will get shuddha the only purpose of ritual is manasik shuddhi and discipline okay nothing else because not everybody can go into reading scriptures shravan manan nididyasan not everybody is ready for that the mind is too hyperactive so for hyperactive people give them rituals engage them if you remember in the manas course i told you the four important things about rituals do you remember the four important things first is discipline as i told you second is engaging people getting family together third thing is pausing from life like it's a pause from life you meet with family you do certain things it's a time for enjoyment you know break from daily routine and mm-hmm. fourth thing is preparing your mind for the deeper practices so never ridicule any ritual or anybody that is doing because he or she is at that state 
they can only understand that but if you have an inquiry mind that's why for moksha inquiry mind is required without inquiry mind you cannot get it because we are not born bhaktas we we, we cannot accept an authority right away you understand we need to go to the path of inquiry inquiry is very so keep asking questions but ask within and if somebody is doing let them do you follow your own path insidiously without anybody knowing it because they will not change and it's very important for them they are stuck with that third obstacle shastra bhavana and second lok bhavana like what will people say if i don't do it shastra bhavana means shastra mein aisa likha hai to mujhe ye karna hai method there's a very good story about um, there's a saint from uh, maharashtra pandurang i think unhi ka story hai jahan tak mujhe yaad hai kisi aur ka bhi ho sakta hai mujhe pata nahi but it's like common story you must have heard there was a shishya looking for this saint and everybody said he is in that shiv temple go and find him to wo ja ke dekhta hai to this person is sleeping with the leg towards shivling wo bolta hai ki are main to isko sant maan raha tha like i was thinking he is a great saint and he is sitting with his leg towards the shivling to he said are you the saint i heard about you but why are you sleeping with the legs towards the shivling that saint said okay if you feel that it's wrong then put my leg somewhere else i'm too sleepy right now <laughs> then he lifted his leg that shishya who was looking for that guru and put the uh, legs uh, other side the other side shivling appeared so anyway aisa hua hoga nahi hoga we don't know but usse learn karne ko kya milta hai ki if you are too much into this direction or even if your hand is better than legs all those things then you're not ready for moksha doesn't matter respect apni jagah we are not talking about the respect so you have to respect rituals okay because they have been designed specifically for certain purpose they have their own purpose but if it's disturbing your life too much that's why it's less ritualistic right now before agar hum 2000 years pehle jaate to they were like full rituals like you know elaborate pujas we don't do so elaborate pujas these days hum everybody is busy so if rituals would take you to moksha sabko moksha mil jata <laughs> but that will not take you to moksha that will because rituals are mostly done for achieving punya that means they are again stuck in one of the obstacles so mindset alag hota hai matlab ritual karne se kuch acha hoga so you are in the right path so don't in, uh, inquire to your mother inquire in the scriptures <laughs> yeah <laughs> first tatva bodh then bhagavad gita then upanishads it's a progression you cannot directly read upanishads सर के ऊपर से जाएगा भगवत गीता इज द मोस्ट प्रैक्टिकल फॉर्म ऑफ ओपन बिकॉज इट्स फॉर अ कर्म योगी दैट्स व्हाई आई हैव टू डिस्कस कर्म योग विथ यू गाइस अगेन इट्स गिवन टू अ वॉरियर इन अ बैटल फील्ड सो दैट मींस लाइफ लाइफ इज अ बैटल फील्ड from morning to evening sometimes यू नो ड्राइविंग इन द रश टेकिंग केयर ऑफ किड्स डीलिंग विथ नेस्टी पीपल इट कैन बिकम अ बैटल फील्ड सो भगवत गीता इज द मोस्ट प्रैक्टिकल टीचिंग्स ऑफ ओपन So you should start with Tatvavot Bhagavad Gita and then go to. I'll tell you also the Upanishad. We should you should go gradually, you know. But first, it's a long journey. We are in mm-hmm. for a big journey together. But it will be very interesting. That much I can promise you. It's beautiful. So does that mean you need to have good faith to get moksha? Or so if you if I tell you somebody had a very good faith uh, in Bhagwan, they used to do daily puja, get up and do everything. They were really karma yogis, do their job very nicely, everything. And then all of a sudden, their twenty year old son died, and then they started cursing God. Why? Because it was just faith. Faith can crumble any time. So faith may be a starting point, like a spark, but it is not something that sustains you. What sustains you is knowledge, not belief system. So faith is just a spark. and then you have to build on top your practices faith is just for you to come to this class somebody told you oh i know archana she does this classes and they are really nice you come on that you listen to it you have faith on that listening you have come here and then you analyze yourself whether she is really good or not what is moksha i'm doing whether the classes are your teachers are really good or not when you analyze then you stay then your faith has gone because that analysis becomes your own mental experience right and then you start experiencing the change that stays so faith is not so what you what develops gradually is called shraddha shraddha is a combination of faith love respect for the guru and fourth very important zeal to know more i want to reach there that is a very important part of shraddha that's why it's not blind faith shraddha is very different from faith you cannot get shraddha for a person right away what you just get get is just a belief or a faith so faith is just a spark so anybody saying oh this is my belief system you know how people say with different religion so that's why i tell them don't get stuck at belief like your mother has a belief that 
be doing this ritual because Savitri did that or whatever. That's a belief system she is living in. She hasn't progressed from there. Believe me, the story of Savitri is very strong. If you really understand the Vedantic meaning of Savitri's story, every story in our Puran has a Vedantic meaning. Now, Purans were written for a simpler mind who cannot understand Vedas because they realized, Rishis realized that we need to tell things in a story form for people who don't have that much intellect or understanding to understand Vedas or Upanishads. So that's where Purans were generated. Now, all the Purans, all the stories what you see from Purans, they have come where it's Vishnu Puran, that Bhagavad Puran, all the churning of the ocean and the wish and halahal and the Shiva drinking the poison. Where is it happening? It's only happening in the abode of the mind. All the Puranic stories, um, Durga Ji killing the Mahishasur and all those things, it's happening here. It's all the reflection of the battles we go through or the things we go through. It's for the mind, all the Puranic stories. So if you, you, those are very beautiful stories. I love them. And it's good for kids. But you don't have to be a kid all your life. It's just because we were deprived of these teachings when we were children. That's why we question now, right? Because we are trying to understand. So as children, we should have read all the Puranic stories, all the Dasavataram, everything. We should teach our children all those things, but only for children. Once they are 14, 15, they should graduate to real teachings. And these teachings help because they are very colorful. They speak in the mind. What if they simply told, love God, Tattva Masi, Aham Brahmasmi, who will follow these teachings? So that's why this Puranic stories were very ingeniously built into a culture. Because the colorful stories, they don't get lost. Every mother has told some Puranic stories to the children sometime or at least read somewhere. So that is why. Don't neglect ritual. If you think a ritual is good for you, it builds up your discipline, do it. Stick to it. Maybe that's the only rope you have, but understand and do it. Why I'm doing it? What is the purpose I'm doing it for? I have a conflict of God itself. I have that conflict. Yeah, go ahead. Speak about yeah. it. Like, who, who, who is God? Like, yeah, people do worship and so much things, but still they struggle after years, right? Like, when, when they're almost like 70, 80. <laughs> Struggling to imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There is some superpower up, above us, for sure, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Uh, okay. I, I mean, I've not seen the superpower too. It's a very common question. I'm glad that you asked. Anybody has a similar question? Anybody struggling with that image of God or understanding? First of all, we should stop using this word God because God is coming from the culture which ruled us for so many hundreds of years and they have a very confined idea of what, what a God is. God is somebody up there living in heaven that is giving you either punishment or something and you have to go through the process and achieve salvation when you meet God. Okay, so that's a concept and because we've been ruled for such a long time, the concept of God this way has ingrained and it's simple. Simple things get ingrained very fast, okay? It's a very simple concept, correct? There's a God up there who takes care of your pap and punya and gives you phal accordingly, all those things. So first of all, our culture, Sanatan Dharma, is not based on this type of God at all. So I'll explain you in this way. You have your mother, you love your mother. <clears throat> Anybody, you have your mother, you love your mother. So these are different women in different shape and form. We all love our mother. But what if I say, I'm not loving my mother, but I'm loving the motherness in her. If that same lady, if she's torturous towards me, the child will stop loving the mother, isn't it? Is it? It's the mamatva, the motherness that the child is loving, the care and the love, isn't it? Everybody agrees? Thumbs up? If the same mother is torturing the child, beating every day, will the child love the mother? No. Understood this concept? That what we love in a mother is the motherness. Similarly, there is not a God we pray to. It is the divinity, that isness that's present in each and every person, human being, living even in a rock. Now, you're a science student. The energy with which the electron runs in your cells, each and every cell, is the same energy with which an electron is also present in the rock. Yes or no? Yes. Amazing. So, it is that tattva because of which everything is functioning properly. The gravity is just right. If little less will fly away, little more will stuck to the ground. Because of which earth is moving, the whole solar system, entire galaxy is moving, just right for the human beings to survive. That tattva, that universal intelligence in our culture is God. We don't call it God, we call it Ishwara. Ishwar is the technical term. In Rig Veda, there's a portion called Purusha Suktam. Okay? That's a definition, description of that Ishwara. It's very beautiful. Purush Suktam. Just Google it. You get a PDF of it. Just read through it. And Purush Suktam, like it says that the whole Brahmand is it is the body of that Purush. So don't confine God to a person or somebody who's wishing you good or bad or punishing you. Oh, this person is doing bad, I'll punish. Nothing like that. 
it's the universal intelligence because of which your heart is functioning your liver is functioning that energy because of which your food is digested the jatharagni because of which everything is functioning is ishwara and why we pray in different forms if you're praying to krishna ram vishnu or whatever shiva you're not praying to that form you're praying to that divinity within that form which has been transferred to us through stories or their representation of that so if you're somebody's just stuck to the image of a shiva that i love shiva and i don't pray to any other god that means you're praying to a costume you don't understand the tattva behind it so the real term is tattva ishwar tattva mamatva mother's tattva essence tattva tattva bodh that book that is why that's the first book you should read tattva bodh what is that tat tvam asi and that's nowhere else you are that you are that purusha with purusha i don't mean male or male purusha that being that you are that cosmic being everything is inside you why are major uh, bhagwan bhagwan when i say it's the form of the ishwar ram vishnu krishna they are shown as blue have you ever thought of it ask this question because at that stage they are like sky sky color is blue before it's very representational like sky is all pervading right the space so that's why probably they chose blue color for such divine beings because they have they are all over that tattva is all over so even if you reach that state you transcend your mind you transcend your ahankar you become that tattva that is why tat tvam asi you are that this is another mahavakya i am that you are that that's what the rishi said they don't say that you're going to become that after your practice no you are already that but why we don't realize it because of our ignorance of somebody said right five vikars kaam krodh lobh moh mad matsar ahankar all those things all the tendencies of the mind the mind is like a veil like a curtain that prevents us from reaching that divinity which is right here present everywhere a little clear so it's a tatva we pray to that tatva you can find in a blade of grass in the pen you write in the computer keyboard that you click everything is any material has the same tattva inside whether living non living we can invoke saraswati in a pen you know we were told to invoke saraswati in a pen before our exams that's what my parents told me just take a moment to invoke saraswati even when you speak when i give this this type of lectures i do that so i am not speaking somebody else is speaking so tattva that's what we pray to we pray to the essence and that's and why we pray in different forms because variety is the spice of life <laughs> not many cultures can understand this but if i give you a set of doctrines and dogmas you have to follow this and just follow to one image our minds are different we may not connect to that image so that's why the freedom is given to us to choose whomever at what stage of life we want to devote our energy or prayers to that image based on our requirement also we invoke that tattva in that image because we can relate to that that is why all other cults religions have also they say that one god but they have so many denominations i was shocked like thousands of denominations and christians muslims also have so many sects buddhism also everything so division is the nature of intellect we like to divide and take out things which suits us some people like the this side of pizza some people like the crust of the pizza isn't it so every mind is different so we are so lucky to be born in bharat to have that culture within us that we get to choose our ishta devata that means my own personal deity like that ishwar in a form and we are very formed beings so we need a form we cannot do without a form you cannot just pray on formless it's impossible unless you're born saint so you need a form it's like the pole you need the pole to go up to an height in your practice and then you have to leave that form to go to the other side that's when saying shastra ahankar or bhavna even attaching to that form is not good there's a very famous story when swami ramkrishna paramhans uh, was too attached to the kali image you must have heard this image of the kali mata he used to work in the, stay in the kali temple all the time then his guru one time hit him in his head and almost it started bleeding here say that forget about kali feel yourself here something like he did and then as it says that al- almost as soon as the guru hit him he got that out of that image and then achieved nirvana that's a story the beautiful story so image is an image but you have to understand behind it, the tattva of the image so i told you before the ishwar is like space so if i have glasses of different sizes or different shapes the space between each glass empty glasses is the same 
space we just feel that oh this space is small this space is big because the size of the glass is big or size of the glass is small but it's the same tatva same space similarly some people may say that uh, oh this god is more powerful than the other doesn't matter it's up to you how you want to connect with that even if it's smaller little rock you can connect with make it a god and pray upon it and then you can attain achieve nirvana it's your energy that is getting invoked in that rock doesn't matter some days back i had a very profound realization that i want to share with you so i love traveling so um last time i was on flight so i always see this um, business class in the first class they feel sitting so sleeping comfortably <laughs> and of course i cannot afford so i have to go to economy class but there was a strong um, desire from many many years because before we were not able to afford even flight right when we were in india growing in a middle class family that was a very big deal going to a flight so the strong desire to ride on the business class and sleep in the business class i had this for many 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 years so sometime back what happened then i was uh, just sitting in my room reading something and then i was just thinking on a bigger global level i always say that earth is a big space craft and then we are all astronauts we are riding on it and this earth you must have heard me saying this that we are all riding in the space we don't even know where earth is going because the whole galaxy is expanding so every time you touch the space is not the same space and then i'm nicely lying down on my bed very comfortable almost about to sleep but reading something i said oh my god i have the best business class here so look at my <laughs> separate bathroom also <laughs> so much of room and i'm sitting on the best aircraft which is earth which is i don't know where it's going thought came to me and that desire within me just evaporated just like that so these realizations you gradually get you know i just imagine myself and on earth going in a business class in my room <laughs> just wanted to share with it so it may seem funny to somebody that's why i don't share this <laughs> with anybody but i thought i'll just share with you it may sound funny but this is how you gradually start getting rid of your desires you know god will give you insight not god ishwar <laughs> that tatva that divinity within will keep giving you that insights so that one by one all your desires gets evaporated and you be one with that issue that totality thank you archana it was wonderful very profound <laughs> yeah it was just very beautiful